Greetings, listeners. I am your host and GM this evening, Zach Barrett, and welcome to this Twisted Gear Studios production of Spacers, our Starfinder actual playcast. As mentioned in our Call of Cthulhu show last week, this is our last recorded episode of Spacers for the time being. We're looking into ways to record while staying separate. We'll be back with new episodes soon, and when we are ready, you'll be the first to know. With that, on with this week's episode. Last we left the crew. Time is askew. Jovac is alive and half the crew are significantly younger. With their new friends, Kovo, Tex, and a still alive Farah Argus, they went to seek advice from Sol and Luna, ancient and powerful celestial dragons. They were given an egg to hatch their sister, Kala, before heading off back into space. So you've just had your conversation with um, Saul and Luna, and you've just brought in the chronometric egg into the hangar bay of your ship. What would you like to do now? Sleep. This has been like a mentally exhausting, <laughs> mm, challenging day. Let's day? 26 years? <laughs> mm. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to rest and like recuperate some health. That would be nice. Yeah, that's yeah. good, yeah. Yeah, nap time. Oh. I suddenly <clears throat> have damage from our Jovac fight. That was the same day. Yep. Yeah, technically it's been the same day. Technically. But yeah. also technically not. <laughs> well, as you guys are kind of discussing your plans there, um, Farah kind of pipes up. She goes, well, yeah, we're going to be in Drift for a little while there. Um, while you were in there, we got a communication from the cave. We got the coordinates for Kalos. Cool. For Kairos, so we're going to we're gonna head on over there. However, how do we want to deal with our little passenger that's over here? She kind of like motions towards. Hey, don't talk to mom. Greg like that. <laughs> I look, she looks at Greg. <laughs> <laughs> yep, fair enough. Greg looks back. <laughs> <laughs> um, now I'm referring to the mum, not mum. Oh, that passenger. Can we um. drop her off on a Vesk planet? Oh, can we just drop her off here? No, she'll die. Yeah. Is there like a like a like a neutral like planet where she can get passage to a Vesk planet if need that be? Next uh, text pops up. Yeah, I found that there is a uh, there's a Vesk outpost that's within drift. We can get there. All right, let's do and that. And then we can go to Kalos after that. Yeah, let's do that. Fine. Okay. She's still gotta be okay. Can't just drop her anywhere. If it's a Vesk outpost, she'll, she'll be fine. She'll be fine. Yeah. Apparently, that's the mm. uh, general consensus. Let's go. <laughs> so it'll take us a couple of days to get there. So just okay. plan yourselves accordingly, and um, well, hopefully your mom doesn't shoot everybody. I go sleep now. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're sleeping. <laughs> All right. So everybody goes and hits the hay. Uh, feel I'm free going to, to t- wait. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to take Grec. There we go. And I'm going to put a little. What is something a baby goblin can't chew through that's like a rope, but not a rope? I dare you to find out. Is there anything that is sealable but she can breathe in? I just don't want her wandering, him wandering you want away. You a tub maze, basically. <laughs> like, you want a tub, baby you have one tub made bin and just pop some holes in it? A rubber made. That's exactly what I want. With it. Yes. There's a bunch of cardboard boxes. I mean, like, hey. You put some blankets in there at least. Make it pretend it's a Oh, no, I'll make it comfortable. I just can't, <laughs> I don't want him to walk around anywhere. Sure. I'm going to go and find things so I can construct a baby swing carriage thing. Roll profession craft. What? <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing in this. And it's intelligence. Ah. 12. Wait, Slug. wait, hold on. Sorry, I might have done that wrong. No, it's 12. <laughs> Never mind. It is 12. Yeah, okay. Find an awful lot of duct tape. <laughs> There's some storage containers that got very little in them. Okay. Cardboard boxes. There's uh-huh. the garbage bin. There's some uh, spray adhesive. Oh, perfect. Half of it's been drank by Grek. <laughs> Gross, okay. Yeah. 
Um, well, we know that he has trouble with duct tape because of the whole diaper situation. Um, so I'm going to take the garbage bin. Yeah. I'm going to take something, like a tool, and drill holes into the top like you do for a mason jar when you catch butterflies. <laughs> yep. And I'm going to put a blanket in the bottom. Yep. Put Greg in with a pillow. Yeah. With his gravy rag. Close it. And then duct tape around <laughs> this lid of the Greg, garbage what do you do? <laughs> um, can I? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> While Cliptic is like busy, like pulling the duct tape off, can I roll some kind of like stealth? Can I roll a stealth check? I knew it. <laughs> to or um, or even sleight of hand because they're both dex. Probably gonna be sleight of hand if it's what I think you're thinking. To take one finger and just kind of put it over the edge of the thing so that the duct tape kind of goes. Roll well, sleight of hand. <laughs> <clears throat> now remember, I don't have like plus fourteen and shit in this anymore. <laughs> That's a fifteen plus my dex modifiers plus four, so nineteen. Of course it is. <laughs> plus I'm operative one. Well, actually, I'm not because I'm a baby. <laughs> so babies could be operatives. You were able to tape the thing successfully. <laughs> that I know of. Okay. Yeah. As far as you know, there are no traps. Fair enough. <laughs> And then I'm going to bring that into my room and just put it by my bed. And then I'm going to go to sleep. Okay. Deanta, what are you doing? Sleeping. <laughs> I go to bed. Just, just <laughs> face first poof, in yep. the pillow. That's it. Right. Just like Laura, what are you doing? I'm going to go up to uh, Captain Mormon. Oh, of course. <clears throat> so. Uh, oh, you again. Right. We're going to drop you off at Avesk. Uh, outpost, so you should be okay to go from there to anywhere that you wanna you wanna shoot some some swarm or I don't know expand the grand and glorious empire. But uh, yeah, no, I just just thought you should know. Know what? That we're gonna you're, you're gonna get dropped off at a uh. Vesk outpost. We're not just gonna. Like, you're not stuck here. I suppose I should say thank you then. I mean, we kind of saved your life. You definitely prevented me from defending my honor of my homeland and my empire, but you are permitting me what the ability to go back. What is honor? We keep talking about it. Oh, like, you know what? No, I'm not having this fight. I'm going to bed. And I leave. Do you have any signifying marks on you? Uh, yeah, like the patterning of my, because uh, uh, Vesk females yeah. are, are multicolored, so like the yeah. patterning of my of my scales. It's fairly unique. Okay, but that's, all right, so you wouldn't know what that means. Okay, so then as you turn and walk away, good night. She also goes to sleep. Put the gun in her lap. <laughs> Quick. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Your finger was successful oh. in preventing a complete seal of duct tape. Well, I gotta get out of the jar first. <laughs> yep. The, jar, the garbage jar. So, um, do you want me to roll anything to get out yep. of the jar? Okay. You're gonna start with a strength check. Oh, Baby strength. <laughs> But you get a plus five to it. Oh, really? What? Yeah. Because oh. you've damaged the seal. I rolled a 10 on the dice. So 15? 15. 15. Mm. You you can hear the tape beginning to pull, but you're still... It's working, but you're going to be at it for a little bit. Roll a fortitude uh, saving throw. Can I use my teeth? Not yet. <laughs> you're still in the tin. Ooh, I got a eight on the dice for fortitude. <laughs> you get kind of exhausted. You can do it again, but it only had a plus two. I'll do it again, because it's crack. <laughs> I got a 19 on the dice this time. <laughs> this time you uh, start putting your feet into a kink, tink, tink. You're sort of buckled a little, little mm -hmm. bit, but you've really pulled up the tape. You can mm -hmm. now see the tape from the lid. If you want, Try and start using your claws to kind of. 
<laughs> your claws to kind of cut out the tape a little bit. So yeah. this time you can use um, a different skill. This one, you can just do like a, 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 an attack on it. Uh, sure. I mean, goblins are more nocturnal than they are. Mm-hmm. What's the opposite of nocturnal? Diurnal. There you go. <coughs> Diurnal. Yeah. Oh, actually, he real quick. Roll technically, one more. he doesn't know either one of them. Roll one more fortitude save. Uh, the fortitude, 14 on the dice. Okay, so you're still, you're not any more exhausted. Okay. And then oh. 12 on the dice for the claws and teeth and such. Uh, on the enough to hit. Roll a D, D4 plus 2. 3 total. I got 1. You have torn a hole in the duct tape. One more push and you're free. Yes. <laughs> I got a two on the dice this time. <laughs> Clink. Uh, what is your da, 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 wisdom? Your wisdom modifier there, Cliptic. What is it? Plus three. Roll stealth, Greg. Fifteen. As you kick it, and you don't quite actually make it to the... You see, you're clawing, but you're clawing more metal than you are in duct tape. Mm-hmm. You hear cryptic stirring, turn in their bed, snore. <laughs> back to sleep, she goes. He goes. Cliptic is back to sleep again. Is <laughs> Greg <laughs> <laughs> singing a lullaby? <laughs> Roll combat. <laughs> Combat? Oh, I only got a six on the dice. <laughs> it's because I'm trying to oh, get out of the tape. Uh, my... I really want it to oh. succeed. <laughs> Roll D4. <clears throat> uh, a three on the D4. Okay. You have successfully been able to cut all the duct tape. You can mm-hmm. just open the lid. Okay. I'm going to open it the same way you see like an octopus open it. <laughs> like a... Hand out it, and yeah. it opens. Mm-hmm. Dun, it comes dun, out. Dun, 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 baby dun, from dun, nightmares. Dun, 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 this is Gremlins, baby. All <laughs> right, and I'm just gonna s- slide, cartilage slide my way out. <laughs> cartilage. And just kind of like creep along the floor. <laughs> so gross. And uh, there's like, gotta be a vent. <laughs> oh my there god. There is, in fact, a vent. Into the vent. Jesus. Thank you, Absalom Station. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this baby has all the memories of Adolf Greg. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Horrifying. <laughs> all right, uh, Greg. Everyone else is asleep. What are you doing? I'm gonna stick with you for a bit. You've kind of been like ignored the past few episodes. So, baby Greg doesn't have the <laughs> physical ability to speak, right? Correct. He has all the memories of normal Greg. Scary. Um, this is nightmarish. Is he able to like write things down or draw pictures and stuff? It'll be some really hefty rolling. Yeah. Because the physical motor functions to do that aren't there. You're gonna have to force yourself into it. Mm. So you can roll for it. <clears throat> you want to try and Your write muscles something. Muscles aren't developed. Yes. Right? God. So I have all the memories of adult Grek. Yep. Why wouldn't I want to be adult Grek? <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, no. I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> I knew. I was waiting for it. The second I'm sorry. You your... I'm not targeting you personally. <laughs> Technically. All right. You know what? Let's be fair about this. Technically, there are four people on this ship. Who have one of those little stones. And you have a D4. And I have a D4. So let's find out who's quarters. So Farah, one. Diantha, two. Kobo, three. Tex, four. Okay. (laughs) Diantha! It had to be! It had to be! I tried to make it fair. I tried to make it fair. Okay. Honestly, I would have been mad if it wasn't me. It has to be me. <laughs> so, Diantha, you you know exactly where her room is in the vents? Yeah. You find it. Diantha's knocked right the hell out. Honestly? 
That's exactly where you last touched it. All right, so I'm going to try stealth on my way into the room. Okay. Still don't have all the capability, physical capability. Still a one-year-old goblin. Okay. I'm just dexterous. And you're gonna get stealth at plus five. Because oh Diantha is asleep. I rolled a one on the dice. <laughs> so natural. Wait, it's a natural one. Natural one, technically. So you fall out of the vents <laughs> and make a massive racket. I wake up. It's also called, Jesus Christ, <laughs> this die is natural. Uh, yeah, Diantha, you, you shut up. I rolled a natural what are you, 20 for this. Baby, what? what are you doing? What oh, are you doing? And I'm just sitting on the floor, my feet stuck out, so it's like. <laughs> <laughs> I sit on the ground. All right, look. I'm going to reason with you, Greg. You're in an unfortunate situation right now. It sucks. And I feel for you. Due to my mathematical functionings here, <laughs> I would be 17 if I give you the stone, which would be a lot more helpful than you being a baby. Because <laughs> right now, you are um, a massive issue for everyone. <laughs> his, his toes are wiggling. <laughs> So here's here's the deal, Greg. I'll give you a turn with this. A turn. I want it back. That's six seconds. He, hold, he holds out a little baby hand. <laughs> I will we'll shake hands, and in my hand, I'll, I'll hand the the stone over. Nothing seems to happen immediately. <gasps> Oh. I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs> I go back to bed. And you leave the stone in Greg's hands? I do. What do you do, Greg? <clears throat> I sit there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Honestly, I was thinking of giving it to you anyways. Do you sit there for the night? Uh, no, I'll go back into the vents. But I'm staying in the vents. I'm not going back in a fucking jar. <laughs> <laughs> it was a garbage can. That out. Excuse you. No, no, make it better. The second one was a jar. A jar? No, no it a lid on we it. Taped it like, we no, poked no, no, holes no. like it was a jar. I said I poked holes into it like it was a jar, so you had ventilation, not an actual mason jar. Listen, to Greg. Either or, it's still funny. It was a jar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you just go to sleep in the vents, Greg? Yes. All right, so you pass out. Uh, Cliptic, you wake up first in the morning. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna look at the garbage <laughs> jar. You wake up, you see the jar is torn open. It looks like a monster broke out of this thing, and the vent is torn apart. Oh no! <laughs> I'm going to run out and be like, Greg, 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 and I'm gonna grab uh, like another gravy rag. Yep. And I'm gonna you just really, like hold things, it right? out and just be like. Greg, I have a snack for you. Snacky <laughs> time. Let's do this. What all you hear all is outside your door. I open the door. What are you doing? Actually, no, you're sharing a bunk with this one. Oh, am I? Yeah. Oh. There's uh, the, do you guys have communal bunks on this oh, ship? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do. That. That's right. Okay, yeah, I'll yeah. wake up when you wake up. The baby's escaped. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta find him before he does something stupid. We have to. <laughs> yes. And I'm gonna roll her out of the ah! bunk. <laughs> Come on, we gotta do this! And then I'm gonna uh, run, and I'm actually gonna throw another gravy rag at her. <laughs> just <laughs> like, right in your face. Oh, That's right. Gross. <laughs> now, Diantha does sleep in a different quarter. Yes, so I'm gonna go grab Diantha. You open Diantha's door. Her clothes are a lot bigger on her than they were before. Oh no. <laughs> 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 Give me your sheet, Diantha. I did not make a level one sheet for you because you had the freaking orbs. So uh, do you I'll want, just throw numbers at you. Do you want Grex? No, that's okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. Grex. Yes. You wake up and the clothes, the little sack you've been wrapped up in, mm -hmm. is busting at the seams. The diaper <laughs> is popped open, oh, and God. Uh, here's your sheet back. <laughs> Feel like your good old self again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Only two episodes of Baby Greg, I'm so sad. <laughs> uh, Greg has a question. 
<laughs> or a thought. So Greg asks God. Yes. Yes. God. Um, Are you there, God? So it's me, Greg. Laurel's, has Laurel always had a Dashko? No. Oh, no. I've, I've, I had a, a one that was just blades mm-hmm. for a little while, and then recently when we attacked... Uh, so actually took his. Yeah. No, not his. It was we attacked a different ship before we no, went after the show ship back. that we crashed on was a different ship. No, you stole in. Texas. Yeah, that's what I figured. Oh. <laughs> okay. That makes sense. So this ship <laughs> is our ship. Yeah. Is this, the this is the meteor as we yes. as you remember? remember it. We crashed yes. in with Texas ship. Yeah. Did Laurel have anything that was like that? belong to her mom? No. Nothing God answers, all? no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, God. <laughs> all right, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say something rude and I decided not to. Whoa. Ooh, never Whoa. Mind. Curb your enthusiasm there. <laughs> <laughs> Considering. So you, had, you had nothing for your mom, eh? Right. <clears throat> no. Nope. Not even letters or a data pad or messages? I had a, had a data pad that had that like has, has letters on it, but they're not addressed to her. But they are addressed. There are there are letters on my data pad addressed to people with the same last name. Are you gonna go rifle through Laurel's stuff? No, that's fine. Um, so um, I'm not gonna pronounce her first name. Captain Vorman. Was she sleeping on the bridge? No, she was in the cargo bay. She was in the cargo bay. Yeah, okay. she refused to leave um, the cargo bay. Does the meteor have like? Um, <clears throat> Do we have like any kind of historical records, like general historical records from on the meteor, like, stuff? like general history? Yeah. Yes. Like history yeah. books. Yeah, basically. you would. You of, would. So what Greg wants to do is he wants to go and look at those records and see which history it is. Which history books do we have? All right. So you crawl through the vents. You mm-hmm. pop out the uh, into the bridge. Uh, as you draw, pop up with the vent, you drop down. Mm-hmm. Land on the the bridge, two feet. You look up, and Kovo's just staring at you, sitting in the seat. You got big. <laughs> A little bit bigger, at least. Uh, what? Hold that thought. <laughs> Go over <laughs> to the console and just like culture check. Do, 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 do. Culture check? Yeah. Oh, sweet lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, sweet lord. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Is is that a twenty? I think so. Is the pumpkin on this a twenty? Yes. Sweet natural it's a twenty. Natural twenty. Natural nice. twenty plus. I do have a plus six. I mean, yeah. still. Okay. So what are you looking for? Um, I want the it's very historical detailed record of our history of like the swarm attacking the Vesk and Vesk Eleven not being uh, part of that. This ship having. Traveled in time with you. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. With you mm-hmm. has the historical records of where you came from. Okay, mm-hmm. so you can pull off whatever you want. Can I find a floppy disk? <laughs> oh floppy my god! Disk. I'll say that there are floppy disks in this universe. Anyway, basically, yeah. what I want to do is yes. I want to take that information. I want to put it on something, and I want to give it to Captain Warman for her to see. Because right, so it, it'll be super detailed, right? Dates, oh, yeah. places, all that crap. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm. This whole do. time, all you hear is. Oh, Greg! Greg! I have a snacky for you. Greg! We're looking for you. It's We're really early. Can. All right. Once I'm done this, I put the floppy <laughs> disk and whatever remains of this little thing that I have on. And then I'm gonna go out, and I'll go down the hall towards, you know, ecliptic. And the entire time, Kovo just stares at you. Yeah, I'll go out, and I'm going to towards ecliptic, and I'll just walk for a second. Good morning, and I'll a take the grabby rag Grek. and stuff it in my mouth, and just keep walking down the hall. A very <laughs> naked Grek pops on up, takes the gravy rag, and just keeps on walking. I cover my eyes. Ah, no! I'm probably going to be so stunned. I'll be like, ah. I need. To, I do need to find pants, though. You need to make a good first impression when you talk to, or whatever I can find. Cover my bits. Take the there's, gravy there's rag. And gravy I know rag. enough about diplomacy to know I should have my junk covered. <laughs> <laughs> 
In your quarters is a spare pair mm-hmm. of pants, the ones you didn't steal from the halfling. All oh, right, fair enough. Pants you usually wear when you stole from a halfling. A pair of flinches <laughs> pants, probably. There you go. Yeah, yeah flinches pants is a hole in the butt. Yeah, that's, that's fine. For a tail. Whatever, that's fine. Front bits are the most important part. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to go to the cargo bay and uh, find Captain Gorman and hope she doesn't shoot me on sight. <laughs> so as you approach a Gorman, she just... <laughs> I'm a low form of life among her low forms of life. <laughs> yeah. Then she step on up? She looks like she's sleeping, but then you hear the charge of a pistol. She raises it and then slowly opens her eyes. Good morning. What the hell are you? It depends on who you talk to, really. Here, this is for you. She reaches her hand up, but she keeps the gun pointed at you. She takes the data back. Prex used to that. <laughs> And she starts reading it. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? That's my history. Our history. It's not your history, though. See, you're much smarter than I probably think that you look, but... uh, (laughs) Laurel has said that she's your daughter, and that might not be true right now, but it has been true in a different timeline, and... You should probably look up the name Kovac anyway, because that old guy who was riding that giant bug with that creepy looking chick back on Vask 11, the one that destroyed the village. Yeah, just read it. I'm gonna go now before you shoot me. <laughs> Please don't shoot me in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just gonna, like, leave. <laughs> you turn, you leave, and flash in your backside because there's a hole for a tail that you don't have. That's all I can, all I can do, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do we run right. into Greg? So you, you guys turn back around, and then Greg is just wearing pants, only pants, and is now standing in the hallway looking at you guys. How are you back to yourself? Hold that thought. And I'm going to go back to Diantha's quarters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, I'm going to go in to a uh, young <laughs> Diantha, I guess. You now see teenage Diantha. There are no... F- Nope. Scars on her Scars. body. I have her mechanical arm has actually been detached from her body with a regular arm and all of her limbs intact. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just like in like looking at my arm in the mirror because I haven't had one for okay. a few years. And um, Greg's gonna go. <sighs> I'm gonna have to admit, the past little while is the most relaxed I've been for quite some time. <laughs> I'm sorry, you were the the most relaxed? And I take were... the stone and I put it back in Diantha's hand. And you... then I go up into the vent. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a baby again? Remember what I said about relaxed? Uh, My digestive tract hasn't worked that well for quite some time. Okay. Oh. Okay, I, I guess I'll, I'll take this back. Uh, you're welcome. I need to get some sleep. It's been a long... A long night. <laughs> uh, okay. I guess I walk out to them. Anybody want to turn with this? <laughs> Whoa, you're littler. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're you just want as it? ugly now as you were then. You know what, wow. uh, Laurel? <laughs> I think I think you should take a turn with it. I throw it at Laurel. I catch it. It's been a long time since I've had both arms. I kind of like it. I put I, it in my pocket. Nothing happens right now. I think I, it's, is it something supposed to happen right now? Give it a few hours. You hear an echo. And we go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take a nap. I'm already awake. I want breakfast. Um. Well, let's let's. I'm gonna go. go I'm gonna go have breakfast. I just walk off into the mess hall. All right. <laughs> I'm just gonna follow suit. <laughs> Because I'm also. Oh, does that mean? Uh, does that mean our stamina and everything is back up to par after having a rest, or no? Uh, yours is at full. De- uh, actually, yes. The only one who wouldn't have had a full night's rest is Deantha, but then she de-aged. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Just, just. I'm not gonna put this in the recording. Technically speaking, that's not how those were originally going to work. But I liked the cute little ear thing that you had done. So I said, "Fuck it, that's what they do." Now. <laughs> <laughs> originally, it was that you would only change ages if you time traveled and then left Kairos without one but uh, this I, is fun I, this I, is okay. <laughs> <clears throat> debatably more fun uh, <laughs> anyway so y'all go for breakfast that was going on yep yep all right uh this Kovo uh 
Tex, and I'm drawing blank. Farah, my god. My <laughs> brain works very slowly. <laughs> Kovo, Farah, and Tex join you guys for breakfast, and there's a whole lot of you sitting all at the table. Uh, throughout breakfast, Laurel, you are feeling stomach's hurting quite a bit. Anyway, so what do you guys want to talk about? So how how long to are we in drift for? Around lunchtime, we'll be ready to drop off Captain Vorman. Well, <clears throat> I suggest... Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. Um, I suggest, uh, less we did on the in our timeline, <coughs> does anybody want to play poker? I would love to play poker. The, the, the chitting grin that's on, on your face. <laughs> sure. I would love to play poker. Um... I'll deal. Perfect. <clears throat> I'll deal the cards. I'm like, I'm just like having the greatest time. I haven't had this much ability to move my body in forever. I'm loving it. Tip, you guys all play poker. Even Kovo's like, hey, yeah, this is great. <laughs> so, Kovo. Yeah. What's your actual name? Kovo. Kovo Bouget. Bovest. So, so that's lower what? Kovo Bovest. Bovest. And where are you from? Like, when are was you I from? born? <laughs> that, that's a very sticky question. I don't even know how to answer that question. What do you mean? I've been hopping through different timelines and helping different versions of us for a good while now. So, like, do you usually just try to find where Jovac is and kill him? Or what no. are you trying to help with? In every single instance that we run into Jovac, he always wins. So our timeline has been erased for the one where the swarm took over. And uh, the Vescarium exists, but it's on its own. Jovac's one of those that he would rather the Empire uh, be defeated than live cowering in cahoots with another weaker entity. Ugh. But there are some versions where, you know, the Imperium does pretty good against the Swarm. Huh. But, but isn't... Yeah, isn't Jovac working with the Swarm? Yes. Well, sort of. In the realms where he wins, he's recently met this matriarch. So he's able to allow the armies of the Imperium to win by controlling the swarm to be weaker. But you've got to have a couple of people fall in order to get the Empire to turn against the others. He used Vex 11 as a scapegoat to convince them that the Pact Worlds are not uh, going to make the situation better. So we waited until after the treaty was about to be signed and attacked Vex 11 to show that the treaty was pointless. No, yeah, there was a bit of a double, double-edged sword. So the treaty should have been signed before Vex 11 was attacked. So he went and met with his younger self. Now this is where everything gets a little bit hazy and where timelines tend to get a little messy. He will always talk to his younger self. Sometimes his younger self goes ahead with it. And in this particular situation, his younger self set the diplomatic vessel he was the pilot of to self-destruct. So is there, how old was he when he went back to talk to his younger self? Oh God, when he went, depends on the timeline. In ours, he was pretty old. Mm-hmm. Our Jovac is a lot older, and even older yet because he's been traveling time with us. So in our timeline, since Jovac is dead, is there a chance that he doesn't go back to his younger self? He definitely didn't if you killed him. So then there might be two timelines then where he doesn't take over. The one where we killed him and the one where, well, because we killed him, he couldn't go back in time. Well, we all started from the same place last I checked. You all come from a universe where packed worlds existed. You know, the swarm was fended off, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so did we. That up until the point where he goes to Kairos, 
everything is the same. It's from that point onwards he really messed with shit. Hmm. So we have to stop him from going to Kairos. But we did. You did. But we have to stop. I don't know if we have to stop. What do we have to stop? Well, why wouldn't we take just the god egg over there and see what happens? Because, you know, god egg. Good idea. Yeah. It's a god egg. See, in all of our attempts, we all failed to stop him. We all ran away, realized that, oh no, time is all messed up. And, uh, well, we ended up running into a couple of these dragons, and they've been helping us out a bit. We're able to hop around to different Kairoses because of Kala's assistance. Except, you know, in the fight. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You said that your Jova came back in time to his younger self in this time period. But the young Jovac self-destructed... Oh, he escaped. Oh, he escaped. Yeah, he didn't blow himself up. He's not that selfless. Oh. But that leads me to believe that that younger Jovac didn't... Wait, I'm confused. I'm very confused. I'm so confused. There are two Jovacs in this timeline right now, yes. But is one against the other? No. No. Okay, that's what I thought. Right. No. So there's two Jovac... In this current line where we're at right now, there's this Jovac, the one that's here and set all of this in motion, mm-hmm. and there's ours. So the young one and the old one. And you want to kill both of them? I mean, it doesn't really matter. Work's done. I want to kill mine, though. He's a prick. Yeah, they're all pricks. They're all pricks. I mean, if we kill them all, we kill them all. So much the better, right? That's a lot of Jovax. Now, here's the thing. Kala might be able to help narrow it down a little bit. To find the one that started it all? Yes. Kala is, we should probably let you know how she, you know of the different species of dragons, yeah? No. <coughs> well, we know of a couple of them now. Well, you've got your chromatic ones, they live on, the Triaxis is the, one of the planets of the pack worlds. Anyway, so you've got your chromatic dragons, they're like the blue, the white, the yellow, not yellow, green, you know, colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got your metallic ones. They're nice, shiny, uh, silver, gold, all that fancy stuff. Well, apparently I've learned well, you've learned now recently that there are five extra dragons. There are the outer dragons. They actually represent stellar phenomena like suns and moons and the void and time and space and all that good stuff. Yeah. There's one of each of them at all times. But <coughs> right now, wouldn't there be two? Because there's Kalos. Kala. Kala and the egg. Uh, Kala's in our in our in our cargo bay. But we're taking this one to Kala. No, oh, you're taking it to the Cairo system, to, to the planet. For Kala to hatch, that's what they told us, right? Yeah, Kala's in the egg, and, and it will hatch when you take it there. Oh, it'll yes. hatch at the planet. Yeah, no, there is only one Kala. Our Kala got beheaded, saving us. This wow. Kala, what uh, what does she signify? Time. It's time. Yeah. She's the outer dragon of time. The Cairo system is her solar system. It's her little home. Do all dragons have their own solar system? No, they all have their own little things. Mm. Uh, Yarig lives out in the blackness of space. He likes to think of himself, apparently he likes to think of himself as if all the dark matter here, you know, all that good, so I'm terrifying, I'm the deep, you know. Sure. Yeah. They all live in different little places. Sol, Luna and Sol like to kind of live together on that planet there, and they kind of just stay out of the way. Okay. And there's a time, space, sun, moon, and the dark, and void? Void and Vortex. Uh, that's that's uh, Votac is Vortex. That's the green one. The green one. Okay. No, Kala's actually Kala's pretty green. Kala's the green one. Okay. Yeah. Kala's kind of greenish. Depends on the, the hue. Yeah. Kind of greenish yellow. Mm-hmm. You got uh, uh, Yarig. He's the Void one. He's mm-hmm. like a black and purple. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Votec is, well, he's kind of like a greenish, dark blue kind of purple. Mm-hmm. He's a little weird one. 
He depends on his mood. He'll go one way or the other. Really, the the problem one is Yarig. He's kind of the asshole of the, of the lot. Okay. So we're taking the egg to Kairos, and this dragon might be trying to keep us from getting to, to Kairos? Yeah, that's possible. Awesome. How do we even deal with that? <laughs> that one can fly, right? Oh, Greg's, oh, Greg's not there. Yes. Well, he's listening, but he's not there. To we can kind of fly. <laughs> and also you, as a baby. You don't fight it. You run away. Not yet. All right. Laurel has to be an adult first. Throughout this dinner, Laurel is getting more and more, looks more and more disgruntled and discomforting. <gasps> You'll feel better in a little bit. Maybe you should go to sleep. I don't want to. Well, you're being stubborn and stupid, so you should go to sleep. I'm not going to because you told <laughs> Go do 1,000 push-ups and 1,000 sit-ups. Why don't you roll a fortitude saving throw? <laughs> <laughs> you're being stupid. <laughs> 16. 16? That's how you should always talk to an 11. You feel like your food's about to come back up, but you stop it, and you kind of like grab onto the sides of the table, and you watch as her form physically begins to enlarge in, and the scars kind of begin to appear on her face. Uh, oh gosh, I'm gonna take that sheet back. <laughs> All right, and you guys watch as, as uh, Laurel is now back to <gasps> the age that she was when she left Kairos. Oh, thank God. At least I'm out of puberty. And then from the vents you hear. Okay, baby, Greg is back. You should probably get him out of the vents. I'm smaller now, so I'll hop up and try and like go into the into the vents. I'm not too. Dexterity, bad. please. Am I going to be higher now? Mm, no. No? No. Because I am Level technically one. more dexterous. Eh. 16. I don't know what That's about. fine. You get up into the vents and you see baby Grek, who is now wrapped up in pants. <laughs> I'll, I'll bundle the pants. I'll, I'll, like, can I like, take the pants? And like form like a little like swaddle, baby Bjorn swa- kind of yeah, yeah, swaddle, like swaddle me, <laughs> That's swaddle fine. me and like around me. And <laughs> yeah, so it's like a, like a little like at my side. Yep. So um, then I'll crawl back down. I was gonna say. So now my face could be in the place where the butthole was. <laughs> <laughs> swaddle. Oh my god. Listen, if Derek was here, he'd appreciate that what? probably. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh, someone else is probably into that too. <laughs> Should we make it one of our goals to find Flinch also? I mean, probably. Eh. Everyone's like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> When we get there. Uh, if Greg could speak, he'd probably say yes right now, but he's asleep and he's a baby. So. Well, that's fair. You can only see his face, which is mostly mouth. <laughs> Pew, well, you guys drop I'm glad I'm not the parent anymore. Yay. <laughs> oh. All right. You are now adult Laurel, <laughs> which is not much different than child Laurel. Not really, no. 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 All right. Attitude-wise, yes. <laughs> and the ship lands. Is anyone going to go down to the cargo bay? And Yeah, I'll go down. Anyone else? Yeah, yeah me we'll too. All, go. all right, so everybody goes on down. Baby the... Greg goes where they go, really. So <laughs> He can't even walk on his own right now. Swaddle. <laughs> See y'all. Take like, little bits of crumbs. I'm like putting the like, crumbs in as I go. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're actually pretty good with him. Yeah, you know. It's um, it's a baby. This is the best life a baby goblin's ever had. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So you guys go on down to the hangar bay, and as the door's opening up, Vorman is just standing there uh, at the precipice as it's opening up. Sees you coming on down. Looks tries looks confused, looking at all of you, and then looks at the baby. It wasn't he? <sighs> Time. I'm so confused. I have two arms now. It's pretty cool. I'm really excited about it. She flips the pistol over in her hand and then hands it butt first back to Cliptic. Okay, thank you. Wait. Thank you. She Wait. take it from you, she took it from No, she took it, it from She me. hands it back to you, to you, Diana. Thank you. Uh teenage Diana's <laughs> gun. I have a gun and a baby, and I'm like, I, I just reach over and take this. the gun from yeah, Diantha. Something about this doesn't seem right. right. <coughs> just like just just, you know, for now. Uh-huh. Oh, whatever. Look, Does she react um, to uh, Laurel being... No, uh, she's just... Well, we haven't started yet. She just handed the gun over. Uh-huh. Look, um... 
I know this has been weird. And, uh, can't really say that I particularly enjoyed it. But I'm glad you're not dead. She hands the data pad back to you. Well, to you. You're kind of confused about it at first. Okay. You do have my eyes. Apparently I have your attitude. Hmm. Good luck. I can't say I agree with the concept of the Imperium not being at uh, its height. But I can, I can respect you fighting a very good fight. It's all about finding a good fight. I just didn't really care about colonizing. I don't know if that means that I failed or succeeded as a mother. Or will fail or will succeed. Hmm. See what happens. She turns to leave and then she she stops and looks back and goes, Corella Rin, really? I don't know, man. You guys... What do I see in him? <laughs> well, uh, he seemed pretty happy. At least, for a while. I mean, you had three kids. Well, we'll have. Oh, well. Good luck. I just put the data pad in my bag and kind of start walking away. With a lot of the, the page that's opened up on it is like the family history of what you have, like Vesk and oh, okay. you guys in particular. Huh. That was what you see when she had handed it to you. Yeah. She just. You know that video we saw this morning? The guys, you know, class barns. Yeah. She does one of those to you. Oh, okay. Because, you know, you're Vesk. <laughs> and she looks over, kind of past the rest of you, not even thinking about you, and then looks at baby Grek. Is baby Grek awake? No. He's swaddled in happy goodness. She goes right up to baby Grek. And, and very tentatively pats you on the head. I would disinfect. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. That's fair. Baby Greg opens his eyes. I would also do some things. <laughs> <laughs> All that comes out is. <laughs> uh huh. Well, you know, good luck. And she turns and she storms out. Well, like, storm. She walks up, <laughs> but she's a soldier vest, so it vibrates the ship <laughs> as she goes. That, that, that happened. All right, continue on. I, I, so I, I pull the data pad back out and I look at it. Like, Who gave her this? I have no idea. I don't know. Huh. Put it back in the bag and head back up to the to the ridge. Uh, I want you all to roll a perception check real quick as you turn around. Oh, no. <coughs> perception. If it catches yeah. now, I'm going to cry. Back to normal. <laughs> Natural one. Uh, 13 plus something, maybe? Okay. Perception? Yeah. Ten? Never mind. So y'all turn around and go back up to the bridge. Oh no. Oh no. Uh, can I say is? baby Greg's awake just for the sake of it? Yes. Baby Greg. Well, you were awake. Roll a perception, baby Greg. <laughs> well, seven on the dice. <laughs> and it's plus wisdom, so I mean. <laughs> You're just enjoying being swaddled. Yeah, I'm a swaddled. I mean, do you have to roll the 13? I got 13, and I might add something to that. I don't know. <laughs> At most a one, so 14. Yeah, this person rolled higher. They're just okay. hanging out. Don't worry about it. Okay. So, then you go back upstairs and close the, the ramp and head on out to go back to Kairos Prime and see if you can hatch giant temporal dragon. Yeah. Because that's always going to be wise. Thank you for listening to this Twisted Gear Studios production. As mentioned, we'll be back with new episodes soon. Till then, stay safe and have fun where you can. 
The game system you used today was the Starfighter game system by Paizo. Music, sound effects, and ambient tracks in this episode places through video, Copa, Triune Films, and Sirenscape. You can find all of Twisted Gears' podcasts on YouTube, Google Play, Apple Music, and Spotify. Please like and follow the Twisted Gear Studios Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at The Twisted Gear. Your players this evening were Jessica Coles, Lindsay Zlansky, Elizabeth Wells, and Bailey Yarkey. And I was your host, GM, Zach Barrett. Have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time.